In this video, we are going to review the 1920s and the Great Depression for our test. We're going to start by looking at prohibition. Before prohibition, um, alcohol usage, especially in saloons, was a major problem in America. Many men, after they left their factory job, would go to the saloon and spend their money there instead of buying things like clothes and food and shelter for their children. So this became a major problem, especially for mothers and their children who didn't have enough to eat because of this. So the United States created the 18th Amendment, which banned and prohibited or didn't allow the sale or making of intoxicating liquors or alcohol. During Prohibition, government officials would go out and they would dump alcohol out into the sewers and into the streets to stop people from having access to it. But not everybody followed it. In fact, very few people followed the 18th Amendment. You can see that this sign says, in compliance with the 18th Amendment, no intoxicating liquor allowed on the premises while they're standing around seven or eight different bottles of alcohol. So the Prohibition era, even though alcohol was illegal, many people still bought it and drank it and made it. Um, and they would go to places like speakeasies to drink it, which was like a secret bar that you had to have a code to get into. The next topic on your test is the Great Migration. The Great Migration was the movement of about 6 million African Americans from the South to the North between 1916 and 1970. Most of these African Americans left their homes and their jobs and their lives in the South because they were pushed out by discrimination, violence, and Jim Crow laws. And they were pulled to the North, especially cities in the North and the West, by job opportunities. There was still discrimination in the North and the West. It just wasn't as much or as bad as the South. During the Great Migration, Jacob Lawrence created his um, series of 60 paintings depicting the Great Migration. This one shows African Americans going to the train station and boarding trains to Chicago, New York, and St. Louis, three cities that are in the north. The next topic is the Roaring Twenties. During the Roaring Twenties, there was a boom of technology, new technology, new things to spend money on, especially Henry Ford's Model T. Henry Ford created the assembly line, which made Ford Model Ts much cheaper so that everybody could buy them, not just the really wealthy people. When more and more people bought the Model T, it changed America because the roads were starting to get built. We had paved roads all over America. People could move away from the cities and into suburbs. People could just go on a vacation that was in driving distance. They could go for a day ride. They had more freedom and mobility. All of this came about because of Henry Ford and his assembly line and Model T. Also at this time, we had electrification, where there was more access to electricity across America. This was especially important in the rural areas, where they did not have any electricity until the 1920s. Now they can get new appliances, like the ones that you see in this advertisement. Electric stoves, electric dishwashers, electric coffee pots, electric pans, things that are going to make life easier and simpler and more efficient, especially for the women who would have to wash the clothes by hand before. Now they can throw the clothes in the washing machine and go do something else that they might enjoy. They could also move to these suburbs. This was a new thing in the 1920s because if you can have a car, it means you don't have to be able to walk to work. You can drive to work so you can move out of the city and into these suburbs. The next topic is the Harlem Renaissance. Harlem is a area or a neighborhood in New York City. During the Great Migration, when those six million African Americans left the South and moved to the North, many of them ended up in New York City, and most people ended up in the Harlem neighborhood of New York City. And during the Harlem Renaissance, African American artists and writers and painters all start to really hone their craft, and they become very popular and famous throughout the United States. Clubs like the Apollo in Harlem becomes a really popular place where people can play um, jazz music and blues music and other types of music from this time period. It also means that African American audiences who might not be allowed into other clubs are able to go and see these artists. 
So here's an example of a jazz quartet. This is Duke Ellington um, playing. And you can see jazz has lots of wind instruments. It's a very upbeat style of music. Um, other musicians include Bessie Smith and Louis Armstrong. And again, these people aren't just famous in Harlem. They become popular across the United States in the 1920s. The Great Depression happens. Before, in the 1920s, people are buying all of these fun and exciting new technologies, but they don't necessarily have the money to buy them. So they're buying them on credit. And eventually, it adds up the money that you owe to other people. And at the same time, in 1929, the stock market had been going up, 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 up through the 20s. And in 1929, it crashes. And people who had money in the stock market are no longer able to access that money. They have to pay it back sometimes if they didn't actually have it to buy in the, in the beginning. And this becomes a real depression or an economic downturn for the whole country. People who need money start to do these run on the banks where they run to the bank and try to get their money out before they run out of money. And when the bank runs out of money, it closes its doors and it doesn't let anybody in to get their money. So what happens is that people also lose their jobs because businesses can't afford to play, pay employees. And the unemployed, there are 25% of Americans are unemployed at this time and they line up at these bread lines to try to get free food and coffee. They also have to move into these Hoovervilles, these like um, little shanty towns that are not very safe, are not very sanitary, and are not very climate controlled. And they also are selling their belongings just because they're desperate to get any kind of money. At the end of the Great Depression, President John I'm sorry, President Franklin D. Roosevelt starts his New Deal program where he starts Social Security and job programs and other things to try to get Americans back to get money. 